In honor of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, the ABC 10 Race and Culture team is recognizing those who have made major contributions to the community. Sometimes that means documenting some of our nation's darkest moments. I sat down with a local photographer who has taken on that mission. We were incarcerated for our names and what we look like. Nothing else, yeah. I'm sitting down with 83-year-old Lester Ochita as he recalls the nation's reaction to the attack on Pearl Harbor. President Franklin Roosevelt ordered people of Japanese descent to internment camps. The Ochita family spent three years incarcerated at multiple camps. But I always think, damn, I'm as American as anybody. You know, I love American movies. I love football, basketball. I watched the Kings last night. This apology is long overdue. Ochita was there back in February 2020 when for the first time in nearly eight decades, California apologized to the survivors of Japanese internment camps and their families. We gathered every morning, not just school kids, but parents and adults, uh, and raised the American flag in the camps and pledged allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. How bittersweet. Sweet that we're still loyal to our country, uh, but bitter that we're behind barbed wire. You needed a tool or a, some kind of thing if, that people could share these stories. Paul Kitagaki Jr., a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer and senior photojournalist at the Sacramento Bee, is now on a mission to locate and win the trust of other families who live through the camps, documenting their stories of survival through photos of them then and now in a traveling exhibit and in this book called Behind Barbed Wire, searching for Japanese Americans incarcerated during World War II. Besides having an exhibit, I thought it was so important to have a a book, something that people could share. Kitagaki was shocked to learn famed documentary photographer Dorothea Lang took pictures of his grandparents and father preparing to board a bus in Oakland to a World War II internment camp. She also snapped this photo of a little Lester. There he is with his back to the camera. I was four when I went in, seven and a half when I got out, so I didn't experience uh, a, a lot of bad memories. But my oldest brother, who was of high school age, he remembered Florence, Sacramento. He missed it. He missed the outside, and he said he didn't enjoy a single day of his camp life. Kitagaki features a then and now photo of Lester and his siblings in the book. Lester says he's often asked a similar question. They would ask, do you think it'll happen again? I used to always say no. You know, 1942 was a different time, and... Uh, but as things are happening now, it, uh, you know, I, I probably wouldn't answer differently now. Our climate today, what a divided country we have. That's why Lester says he is so thankful for the work of talented photographers like Paul Kitagaki Jr., determined to shine a spotlight on a dark time in our nation's history that changed so many families' lives forever. A lot of them came back and lived here at the church. Because it was the only place they had. They had, they lost their homes, they lost their businesses, and they had nothing else. So this is where they were able to rebuild their lives. History is important, and I, I wish uh, uh, it was emphasized a little bit more, and the kids today uh, learn a little bit more about U.S. history and sacrifices of generations before. And um, so what Paul's doing is, I, I think it's great. Kitagaki is on a mission to share other stories and he needs your help. Do you have a family member or know of someone who survived this dark time in our nation's history? Paul wants to hear from you. You can contact him at kitagakiphoto.com. We also have it on our website, abc10.com.